Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome back to part two of a modern bonsai pot from Shani. In part one of this video, I was on the computer and I was trying out different trees in this pot to kind of get a feel for what looks good and what style tree would fit this pot perfectly. And I finally picked out a tree to plant in the pot. So here's the tree I picked out. It's a twisted Scots pine. I've showed it in uh, maybe one or two videos before where I did a little bit of pruning on it and a bit of styling. I, I think it'll suit this, this planting quite nicely. It has this kind of this low cascade style branch here and it has a fairly compact top. I think it'll look quite good. The first part of this repotting process will be to prepare the pot and Shenny sent me some long fibered sphagnum moss here and he's also sent me a little video, a short video on how to plant the moss and prepare this pot to plant the tree.
That was a great video from Shani. The second part will be to prepare the tree for planting. So I need to uh, get it out of the pot, do a bit of root pruning, get all the moss off the trunk, and there's a lot of lichen on the trunk, and possibly some pruning up top also. So just getting the tree ready to put in the pot. The third part of the repotting process will be to get the plant positioned in the pot and secure enough that it won't blow over in the wind. I'll start by preparing the pot, getting the screens in place and a layer of soil and sphagnum moss, something that I can put the tree on top of. I've got two drainage screens here and I think I'll have to wire them in place because I think as I'm positioning the tree, I don't want them to come loose. I may be, you know, adjusting the tree quite a bit in this planting. There's a duck in my water dipping tank over here where I wash my roots. Hello. Hi. Can you get out of there? There you go. <laughs> it was in the one big tub and then it jumped over into the little one and then out. Did you have fun there? Have a nice bath? You're gonna have a drink, are you? Of that muddy water? Silly ducks. All right. See you guys later. Take it easy. I'll secure this first screen. I'm going to put my wire through the mesh here by the edge like that. And then I'm going to run it over to the second hole and feed it through the mesh again. I don't know if you can see that. Like that. Feeding it through. And then I can tighten it up from underneath to secure that mesh in place. So I'll flip the pot over. There's Shenny's logo on the bottom. Kind of cool. And I'll just uh, twist these two wires together. Pulling and twisting. Doesn't have to be really tight. Just like that. That's got the one mesh in, it's covering three holes. And I've got two holes here that I've got to cover also. That'll do just like that. So now I've got drainage screens on all my holes and I can start adding sphagnum moss and soil, whatever I want. I'll pre-soak the sphagnum moss in the water here. Be careful not to breathe the dust in from this stuff. It's bad for your lungs. So we'll soak that in water. It may take a little while to absorb all the water. And then I've got another mixture here, the shiny, of other moss. So I'll add this to the side over here and I'll get a bit more water there. All right, here I go with the water. Give it all a good soaking. I'm going to mix some bonsai soil in with the sphagnum moss and that'll make a good mixture for kind of applying my base layer into the pot. So I've got some really good bonsai soil here. It's got perlite, turfus, and pine bark, composted pine bark. So that should be pretty good. I'll just kind of mix it up and make kind of a, a nice mixture that can be applied and sculpted and molded and this should drain really well that's looking good i'm going to add this mixture to the pot now so i can kind of push it into those cavities here okay so that's kind of got my base layer and my pot prepared i think that'll be a good good surface to plant the tree on I've got the pot prepared for planting, so now let's move on to the tree. The candles are just starting to extend on this Scots pine. 
So it's a pretty good time to repot them. Means all the energy is kind of towards the top of the tree. I've got a volunteer seedling here. I'm not sure what it is, but we'll save it. And I've got a lot of moss here, and that might be useful. You know, instead of sphagnum moss, you can use this moss. Mix it with your soil, and maybe I can, you know, get that cascading ribbon down the front of the pot there. So I'll remove all this moss. This tree definitely needs repotting. It's been quite a few years. I think it's been three or four years in this pot. I created a playlist for this tree called Scott's Pine Cascade Style. I don't think it was ever part of a playlist, so we'll definitely get one going for this tree. In nature, trees grow quite rapidly and all this kind of bark usually flakes off, but on a bonsai tree, because they grow so slowly, that all this lichen and bark, outer layer of bark stays on. So I'm just gonna brush it off. There is way too much lichen on this tree. The whole trunk just looked white. Again, lichen can look really nice, but you know, it's too much of anything is not good. And it grows back quite quickly. It's a windy day here today. It's a beautiful warm day though. I've got a lot of my tropicals in the greenhouse. That's looking good, the trunk. Nice flare at the root base down here. Yeah, I'll show you the uh, inside of the greenhouse at the moment. So here we go. It's going to be really steamy in there. I've been misting. I wet the floor down, the benches down. So you can see even on the door here, there's a lot of humidity. So yeah, I've got several of my tropical trees in here and they're just having their spa days. Uh, it is supposed to get below freezing uh, about four days from now. So I'll either put a heater in the greenhouse, turn it on, or I'll bring them back inside for a, a day or two. Let's go in now. I think the lens will steam up right away, but maybe I can give a, a quick view before you can't see anything. Here we go. Ficus, Schifflera, my Bougainvillea, my Portulacaria afra. There's a new Sarissa here with nice flowers on it, variegated Sarissa. I think it's called a Fuji for us, Sarissa. My regular Sarissa down here and my aloe. And it's getting really warm in here, <laughs> but it's just beautiful. Oh, I love it in here. All right, back outside, back to work. Hey, duck. It's time now to get the tree out of the pot. So here I go. Uh, it comes out really easily. Lots of roots on the bottom. And I'll have to separate this little seedling here. So I'll get out the root rake and we'll start combing away at the roots. All right, I'll begin combing out the roots, starting from the center of the tree and combing outwards in a radial pattern. Here's this little tree here. Looks like it's well rooted in here. It looks like this tree was just planted in pure turfus or safety zorb. And, uh, I don't know, done all right, I guess. Not real vigorous. I think it'll like having the perlite in the soil. Seems to aerate it better and keeps the soil mixture from compacting more. I think you need that mix of the two ingredients in the soil to kind of keep your trees healthy. Now, I've got to get this little tree out, so. Whatever kind of tree it is, I'll just have to pull and see how much root I can get. That's pretty good there. I broke some of the big roots off, but most of them came out with the tree. You can see I've got enough roots on that one to should survive, no problems. So I'll just stick that in some water until I'm ready to plant it. All right, I'll turn the tree over and we'll Start 
I'll just hang the tree off the edge of the desk here, or the table. And I'll start combing out from the bottom. I'm trying to find my drainage screens. They're in here somewhere. A little centipede crawling around there. So I want to get these roots combed out the best I can and leave them long because I don't know how I'll be planting this in the pot yet. So I want to keep as much root as I can at the moment and then reduce it as I see how the tree fits in the pot. You don't want to trim away all your roots and then wish, oh, I wish they were longer on this side so I could angle the tree more. Here's my drainage screen right there. I don't know if there's any more of them, but lots of nice long roots in here. Got a mat of roots here that looks like they're dead. And that usually happens in winter. All the really fine roots die off and you're left with your thicker ones. There's the rest of that root from that other tree. I think this root mass will be a good size to fit in this pot of shannies. If a tree is growing in a pocket of, you know, a pocket of a rock, all those fine roots become soil in the future. So that's what the tree uses to make its own soil is the fine roots die off in winter and then it grows new roots into those, those, uh, that dead organic matter and slowly over the years, it creates its own pocket of soil in the rock and can continue to grow larger and larger. Until someone finds it and digs it up as a bonsai. <laughs> okay, so we're getting down to kind of the the roots, the live roots. I'm going to give this a wash because it looks quite tangled in here. There's a lot of kind of surface soil in here. Maybe from the moss decomposing. Yeah, I just want to wash it up and see what's happening. All right, here I go. The tree in the water. I'll just kind of try and rake away all that mud and some of the soil. Quite the good base on this tree. A lot of good surface roots. A lot of mud in there. It may be from when I originally collected this tree. This tree was collected from a place where they were going to build houses and there was a clump of trees and I I dug two of them up. I think there was a couple more and I thought, oh, I'll come back and get the rest another day. And next thing you know, it was about a week later, it was all bulldozed under. So it was kind of sad. But I, you know, count your blessings. I got two of them out of it. Two of them out before they got bulldozed over. There is a big, strange root out here. It's like a, the roots kind of gone all snake-like. Interesting. Definitely a feature. I'm just trying to kind of untangle this root base a bit. It's like a big, big clump here. As part of the dead roots, you can tell they're a dark color. Starting to get this all sorted out. It's looking quite open now. And I can see what's going on with the roots, that's for sure. I can see it's being pruned fairly flat on the bottom here. So I'll try and get that cleaned out so you, know, you can plant it flat to the pot if you want, or you can raise it up. It gives you a lot more choices if you don't have a mass of roots underneath the base of the tree. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I mean, I don't have to have the roots sparkling clean. I just wanted to get the majority of the soil out and be able to see what's going on with the roots. Yeah, so I think that'll do. Rather a strange root base, but interesting. Very interesting. I've got the pot on the turntable. So I'll try the tree out in the pot for the first time. So here I go. I'm going to change it so I have the front of the pot, which is somewhere around here. And 
I'm going to try the tree out. Yes, indeed. There's my cascade branch. I probably want that cascading down the pot. However, the interesting part of the roots are over here. So I could have it cascading up also. More like... So that, that's one choice, is to have the cascading branch following the contour of the rock, having the tree on a slant like that. Or if I change it around, I've got the cascading part following the bottom of the rock here. But then I've got a bit of a gap up here. So let me have a look again. I definitely like it this way with the with the cascade branch going upwards following the contour of the rock. It looks well balanced and I it's got the interesting part of the root base towards the front. So I've got to finalize my positions here. I'm trying to get these roots spread out. Something like that. I'm trying to think, do I want the cascade part of the tree over top of this part of the pot? Or behind it? In front of it? Beside it? Hmm. How close do I want the tree up to this part? Or do I want the tree more down here? I think... The tree looks pretty balanced in the pot in about this position. And I've kind of got the main part of the branch towards the back edge of this part that sticks up, but then I've got this branch up here that can fill in here. So I think this is a pretty good position right here. Yeah. I think I'm gonna shoot for this position. So I've got to get all my roots kind of positioned around the pot because they'll grow and thicken up and sort of uh, become one with the pot eventually. Um, I've got to fill some soil in this spot. There's a big pocket of empty space in there. So I'll do that using this nice mix here. Getting it underneath the tree there. I think the tree needs to grow a bit. I think at the moment there's more pot than tree, but I think that'll change in the future as the tree grows. So making sure I get all this soil into the root base here. I've replaced all that pure turface with uh, this better mixture now. So it should do quite well growing in here in this soil. Now I've got to get some soil down into these pockets down here. That'll help stabilize the tree in the pot. It's getting more stable in the pot. I'm just having a quick look at it. Yeah, I'm still liking it. I think I need to bring the tree up a little more here. A bit too much of an angle there. I will probably have to place some rocks around the tree to hold it in place until the roots kind of grow out, fill the pot and hold it securely in place. But uh, Now, I better get my root rake out. And I'll just make sure I got the soil going down into the roots here. Just kind of contouring my soil now, building it up a look at the terrain. Uh, maybe that's a little too even there. I don't want this to look like a gentle hillside. I want it to look kind of stepped and rugged looking. Just changing my angle slightly here by getting soil underneath the roots here. I'm just going to trim away. There's a few roots sticking out here. Just trim those back. One at the back here. That's about it. 
All right, I think the next step is to get it mossed up. Kind of build a nice layer of moss on here. It'll hold everything in place. All right, I'm going to start applying the moss around here. Just give it a light watering, just to soak that moss in a bit. Okay, make sure it's firmly pushed down into the soil. And I'll get a patch up here. Now I'll get some around the back here, like that. That'll hold all that in place. Give it a little watering. Seems to be draining really well. Now I'm going to put some moss out front here. Find a nice clump here, pick out the pine needles in it. Stick that right on top of that root there. Getting there, I've just got to do the moss around this side now. All right, I'll get some up front here. Some at the very back here. I need some right here. The root kind of curling out of the soil there. Interesting. And a bit up top here. Now, I didn't do a very good job of planting this this part of the pot. I need I need a kind of sphagnum moss hanging down there, but so I think I'm just going to use this moss I have. I'll put another patch running down here like that and I think that'll pretty well finish it off I'll clean the area up and then we'll come in and have a final look at the tree here's a final look at the tree somewhere here is the front so I'll grow kind of this area in branches over here I've got some cascading ones that come down here that can be further developed I'll show you it all the way around back, the side, and back to the front. There's the tree planted in the pot. Let me know what your thoughts are on this pot and this tree combination, if you like it or if you don't. I think, you know, the tree's got a lot of growing to do, but I think eventually it's going to look really good in this pot. I've got the pot on the bench now, and I think I'll place a stone over on this side. Maybe one here too, just to hold it securely in case we get some high winds. I think this tree and the pot go together well. It's kind of an exciting addition to my bonsai collection. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.